up this 33 degree slope. And now we're attaching our two bridle ropes to the main rope. It's, uh, it's been under some pressure. We tightened it up, but it's not under any great pressure now. And this has to be, we have a second knot down here about 10 feet. After we pull the load up a few feet, we keep the big rope under pressure and we'll unwind our knot and take our bridle ropes down and reattach them, all while that thing's supporting 1,800 pound load. What we're doing here is simply wrapping this uh, between these knots. Lynn, I might need a little help here. But, uh, Yeah, yeah, you pull those. I'll just hold this up like right. this. Just put, you know, leave enough on the end that you can knot it later. And pull it as tight as you can pull it. I'll hold this loose end here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just strap it real tight. Oops. All right. Probably should have made her knot in the middle. Out Went way. out both ways. Yeah, you know, in other words, let me unwind this one a little bit. I got you. And knot it in the middle, so it's not under not direct pressure. All right. I need to wrap back past you on that yeah. side. Mm -hmm. Something like that. That's fine, because it'll, uh, it'll all be compressed anyway. It's under enormous pressure, but it's, uh, we've done it before and it worked. And if not, say they didn't fail sometimes, they probably did. Well, that'd be something if they got it almost to the top and it failed. Huh? The, uh, here's something. The, uh, I think this resembles what I showed you on the, yeah. in the old monuments, the ISIS knot. So, and it, it humors me to think that the, where would they get the name that? I think it's kind of like uh, pilots call that bolt that holds the wings far on the Jesus bolt. So if you're out there in a dangerous game here doing this stuff, you know, that'd be like the Jesus knot. You might call it that. So we're going to wrap this and make our first pull here. And it's simply a matter of that, that slot mainly keeps that pole straight so it doesn't twist like this. And it helps to come back and come through the slot again because there's a certain amount of twist and uh, slippage in the whole thing. You can eliminate the slippage. The other place you lose where it doesn't just move, say, 10 inches, you don't move the load 10 inches because you stretch the rope every time. But uh, the nearer you get up here, the less stretch there will be. Okay, Jim. Let's, uh, well, I'll, I'll hold this one. Yeah, you hold that one. Okay. Now what we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're taking our first first stroke on this thing now. Yeah. And now we're gonna consolidate that and take our second pull in just a minute. Okay. Jim, is pull this up the side of the go, and then we're going to let it down. That'll keep tension in the big rope, and then we'll disconnect the knot and move it down to the next one. Okay. We're going to reconnect this knot while this thing's under pressure. So we we'll remove it a little bit, and uh, this, this big line, 
hawser. It's uh, this tight. Jim's holding it off up here. Then unwind this knot, this what I call the ISIS knot. I'm sure they had it down pat so they could do it like a sure tiny square knot. Had a system to it. It's like hanging sheet rocket. First it goes kind of slow, but after you hang a couple hundred thousand pieces, it speeds up. Well, 15 feet, you know, just coming in off the street and doing it, you know, with no, no practice or anything. The knots worked, you know, we had it under tension. We started out with one knot, reattached it, we undid it, reattached, and came again. So you could do that with 30 knots or however many you have. Just, and if you could move that load up there six inches at a time all day, you're in business, see. 
It'd be slow, of course, but it'd be steady. And you have 50 of these devices around the top of the pyramid, and everybody's inching those blocks up all day, all night, probably. Just, uh, just a few inches at a time. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's no high technology involved, just ropes and levers. There's nothing to wear out, particularly other than the ropes. The levers might wear out over a long period of time, but uh, it's, uh, and if, if, it, if the load gets away from you, it's simply going to slide down there at a couple hundred miles an hour until it hits the sand at the bottom. So that's not a. You know that happened plenty of times. And, uh, we use this uh, wooden rails that this runs on, but that's not necessary. If it were on facing stones of a pyramid, you'd simply put two planks ahead of the runners on a sled. And then when it came to the end of those planks, you'd simply take the planks out from behind and put them in front. So you just walk it up the planks all day long. They wouldn't slide on the limestone, they'd slide the wood on the wood. And you'd have that heavily greased with beeswax or some lubricant. And all this, uh, here's one thing call it a pillow block here two grooves so you could if you had a light load you could put it in here and you get more of distance on each stroke and for a heavier load you could put it out here I think the Egyptians used three from their pictures of the Jed pillars and but it's just different gear ratio in effect for the lever that's all it amounts to and uh, we just used the since we had one guy on each if we'd had two guys we might have moved it in farther and moved that thing 12 or 14 inches every stroke. Mm -hmm. But if you two guys are moving 1,800 pounds, and if you had, say, four guys at the end of each pole, you're not going to break the pole. The framework would have to be heavier. It's too flimsy. But if you had four guys on each pole, you could up your gear ratio or move a heavier load one. Either way, there's just no limit to what it'll do.